Hey, what? How much for Raspberry Pi Zero? Oh, not today. Greetings all, it's Loki Fish Mars here with a tech rant. So I was wandering around YouTube and went down a rabbit hole, as you know, we all sometimes do, and came across a dirty civilian's video about off-grid internet. Having experience in this in one form or another, I was kind of interested. But I found the $300 Raspberry Pi a bit unsettling. So I replied in the comments, kind of pointed this out, and received replies about, oh, it's you know, convenience, or if it's so easy, do it yourself, and so on. You know, the, so as someone that goes way back in the tech arena, let's go through this. So let's look at a little bit of history. So Pirate Box and Kiwix have been around for a long time. In fact, way back when I was going to the Big Android Barbecue, which I was a scheduled presenter speaker uh, for one, devs were already running decentralized internet. We had things like I was serving my own Android development site from a phone at the Big Android Barbecue. There were other developers doing very similar things, so none of this is new, especially considering that there was an issue with this thing, little thing called Carrier IQ. It was an application that was installed on pretty much every phone, well, every smartphone, that was spying on everyone. So those of us that had some security concerns, hey, decentralized internet was nothing new. But let's take a look at the, the hardware and software on the grid-based pocket. Uh, so it's a Raspberry Pi W with a battery pack, a 512 gigabyte card, and a little waterproof case. Uh, what about the software? It's downloadable, free, open source software that's publicly maintained. The library files are downloadable, free, publicly maintained library files. So let's think about this. Much of the time was waiting for the files to download. Copy the files to the card, insert the card in the Pi, boot the Pi, verify it works, and ship it. Or, if you want to increase profits, you skip the verification process and just ship it. There's also a really big elephant in the room uh, with regards to the grid-based pocket. It's locked down. So there's no ability to, to do uh, LoRa, long-range radio integration, or tactical awareness kit integration, or mesh network. You're not going to be able to hook up a USB or IP security camera or webcam for security. And in an age when you don't own what you purchased, being more commonplace, something being locked down like this, uh, I'm not too keen on. Because, I mean, what happens if there's a new QX release with vast improvements? Well, you can't update it because it's locked. What about library files being updated? Well, you can't update those either because the grid-based pocket is locked. What about new library files that provide better info? You can't add those because the grid-based pocket is locked. Want to remove library files that are pretty much useless to you? Nope. Too bad. So sad. Sucks to be you. Now, if you know coding and are comfort comfortable with Linux command line, you might be able to address a couple of these issues. But there goes the convenience. I mean, it in the end, it's still a locked down Raspberry Pi Zero selling for $300 with no capability for upgrades, updates, modifications, or additions, and that even the, li the library files are fixed, cannot be updated, removed, replaced, or add new ones. But what happens if you don't want a lockdown device? What happens if you don't have $300 just lying around? What if you're just a poor bloke who wants to survive the coming ends? Well... <sighs> What happens if you have a couple of old phones in a drawer? I mean, 
surely a couple of smartphones sitting in your drawer will never work, will it? Well, here's a video showing smartphones going back over a decade functioning as a QX server, just like that $300 Pi, and they're not locked down. Now, I don't cover installation and setup in the video. If there's enough demand, I will make a video covering exactly that. Now, let's watch it in action. Well, let's say you don't have $300. Or think that $300 price tag is a bit much, kind of like me. You don't have the $120 to go over to Amazon and buy the hardware, put it together, and you don't feel comfortable messing with that. Well, what you may have is somewhere in a junk box, or in your junk drawer, or in a box in the closet, is everything you need to do a Kiwix server. Let's take a look here. What do we have? We have Motorola Photon Q from 2012. Galaxy Nexus from 2012. And Xperia Z1 Compact from 2014. A OnePlus One from 2014. An Xperia XZ1 Compact from 2017. A OnePlus 8 5G from T-Mobile from 2020. Spoilers! An Omate TrueSmart from 2013. A number one D6 Android smartwatch from 2016. Guess what? All of these can function as a Kiwix server. Let's test that out. So, on the oldest phone we have here, we are running the Kiwix server. Go over to here, and none of these have SIM cards. Well, except for that one, because that's my personal device. Kiwix server. Photon Q, Kiwix server, connect. We're going to open up the browser. It says 192.168.43. And I was testing this earlier, but there we go. And let's go home. And we have, oh, food for preppers. Awesome. Oh, look. That library of knots file, that's on the grid base pocket. Same library. Okay. So watch this. Just to show that we're not playing any games here. We're going to keep doing that. And we're going to stop the server. Oh, site can't be reached. Refuse to connect. That's because you turned the server off. Now, this isn't the only, these aren't the only devices that I tested on, okay? Test on OnePlus 5G. One of those Walmart tablets. An Amazon Fire tablet. Smartwatch. True Smart. Another smartwatch. Galaxy S4 Zoom, which is what I'm using to actually shoot this video. Okay, Zoom. Now, for your older devices, like an old HTC Flyer from 2011, Motorola Atrix, Photon, even the old Hero, those running very old versions of Android, either the app didn't install or the app froze. Now, with your Samsungs, the Samsungs required a SIM be installed. Even if it was a junk SIM, it required a SIM being be installed. So it could be a dead SIM, a blocked SIM. Just as long as there's a SIM there, it'll still function as a server. 
Hey, wake up. Now on your tablets, like the on 8 inch Tablet Pro and uh, where did I put it? Oh, anyway, on your regular tablets, um, they required you be connected to a Wi-Fi network. Well, if you have one of the little pocket routers, with little travel routers, you can use one of those and that works just fine. Now, I did try this on an AT&T Maestro, which is from 2020. Uh, it's their throwaway phone. And what I ran into was that would not work. It required a SIM connected service to work. So you got to ask yourself if even this smartwatch, which we are actually going to test, if even this smartwatch can function as a Cubic server, then what are you paying $300 for? Because the application is open source, 100% free, publicly maintained. The library files, open source, publicly maintained. There are, you can download those, download what you want, pick and choose, things like that. Let's go open this up. And as we can see on this little guy, it doesn't have a ton of stuff to be completely honest, because it doesn't have a lot of memory. So again, with the older devices, you're going to have storage capacity issues. Once you get up to a certain point, you'll be able to put in larger SD cards, things like that, and be good to go. Uh, just to show that, no, we're not playing around here. We're going to Turn that file server off, and what happens? Same. So yes, even that smartwatch can function as like what the grid-based pocket does, and pretty much everything you need, you already have, probably sitting in a drunk junk drawer somewhere or in a box in the closet. You could go to a thrift store, pick up an old phone. <laughs> Um, some of the prepaid phones you might be able to do for like 50, 60 bucks, grab one of those, dump the files on, and some of those will actually support up to like terabyte cards. So it's not like this whole Kiwik server is this some super expensive, crazy complex thing to do. So with that said... Hit kiwix.org, download the app, drop it on your phone, download the library files, save yourself $300. And if you want to really support the project, take some of that money you saved and actually donate it to kiwix.org. So this about wraps it up. I mean, it's pretty clear that when compared to the grid-based pocket, what's actually possible with very little effort or cost using something that you probably have just sitting in a junk drawer or in your closet somewhere. But before we go, let's hear a word from my fake sponsor. Enjoy and see you next time. Don't you think your freedom and preparedness is worth your time? We do. What do you do when the government turns off the internet, stopping you from buying the latest prepper magazine? Are you prepared for when a country launches an EMP attack, making it impossible to watch prepper vids on YouTube? Will you have the tools ready when hackers crash wireless networks, making your phones useless? What will you do when aliens invade and take out our infrastructure? Welcome to FreeDret Network, a decentralized internet to help protect you when the end comes. Just grab an old phone, or a prepaid phone if need be, install the app from Kiwix, 
download the decentralized internet library files of your choosing, enable Hotspot, and start the server. It can even function as your Android Tactical Awareness device, your Loracha, even a media server, all to help you save your friends and family, and maybe even society. Because like the cunning prepper you are, you used what you already know to your advantage. So visit the QX.org site today and start getting yourself prepped. While you're there, donate some of that $300 you saved to the very nonprofit organization that makes Free Prep Network and the grid based pocket even possible Free Prep Network. Because freedom and preparedness is not about your convenience, it's about your knowledge and effort.